I bet you there's some of these you couldn't have guessed. Hey there everyone, I'm here with an extra video this week just because there was a tag out there that I wanted to do. I saw a tag from author Sarah Sutton who's here on the YouTube platform and if you want to check out her video on this I've included it in the comments below but she did a tag called 10 things you probably didn't know about me so I thought this was super duper fun and because I already have some stuff planned for next week and the week after I just wanted to kind of get this video done and out there so people could check it out especially if they are going through a bunch of other author tuber tags and seeing what they didn't know about some of their favorite author tubers out there hopefully you guys enjoy it but I I have come up with 10 things you did not know about me or probably didn't know about me anyway. Some of them are writing related, some of them aren't, but I have kept it mainly to writing. However, there are a few extra ones that you'll probably be a little surprised at. Okay, so number one. I talk about a lot being a CPA, so obviously I have an accounting degree and I went to school for accounting, but what a lot of people don't know is that I actually have two degrees. And the first one is actually a bachelor's degree in criminology. I originally wanted to be a lawyer, so I had intended to go to law school. So I took a degree in criminology with a minor in psychology before I decided to go into business school where I ended up being an accountant. Where I went to school, a lot of people were taking the business route and I decided that this was the way that I wanted to go part of the way through my bachelor's degree. So I never did end up becoming a lawyer, but I did end up becoming a CPA. So if you didn't already know that about me, that is one little fact that a lot of people don't know. Number two. The next thing I wanted to point out was I do write kissing scenes in most of my books. If you've read any of my books, you know that there's probably gonna be a kissing scene somewhere in there. I have yet to write a book that does not have kissing in it. So, or a near kiss or something like that. There are some serials where the kiss doesn't come till a little bit later, but the story itself has kissing in it. However, there is one kiss in one book that is actually based on a real person. I try not to base my characters on real people and I did not base this character on this person but there is a kiss and there are some details about that kiss that actually happened in my real life. So I did base one kiss on a real person, but I'm not going to tell you which one and maybe you'll have fun guessing. If you do want to guess, you can leave that in the comments below, but uh, yeah, we'll see what you come up with. Number three, I have always been a big fan of boy bands, which you're probably not surprised about, but I did send a video fan letter to a boy band a long, long time ago. I sent a video fan letter to Nick Carter from the Backstreet Boys. I never did get a response. And I don't think I've actually ever told anybody this that I ever did it. I didn't tell any of my friends, nothing. But yes, I sent a video fan letter to Nick Carter. I think I might've totally pledged my love to him, but uh, yeah, that was a long time ago. So uh, whatever. You do things when you're young, no big deal. Okay, the next one, number four. Speaking of things that I did when I was young, my first writing award was actually in second grade. Our librarian had something called the Prescott Awards and she would award writing awards to various different grade levels. And then they would actually publish your book in a certain format and have it in the library for people to check out. So I wrote a book in grade two called Monsterland, which I'm su really not surprised that I got into paranormal considering in second grade, I was already writing books called Monsterland about lands of monsters. And I did win the Prescott Award and my book was put into the library at my school. So that was my first writing award that I ever, ever won. The next thing ties into writing awards again. So number five, I won a short story contest back before I was published. And this short story, um, I have put it out to some of my newsletter subscribers. Maybe I will do that again, but it is about a writer who writes like urban fantasy and he is kind of having a relationship in his head with his character and he's at a big convention where he's like signing books and doing panels and all that kind of thing. And he's really kind of disturbed at how people are kind of objectifying his character because he's like really low key in love with her. So it's really, really interesting how that kind of plays out. And then there's a threat and I don't want to get into too much about it, but it was a fun short story. I entered a short story contest at a local writing convention that they had here for a couple of years. And I did win, which was really exciting. And I got to read my story at the 
awards. And it was a very, very small conference because I do come from like a smaller city. So I would have to say there was maybe a hundred people throughout the entire weekend. It is quite small, but it was a lot of fun and I did get to read it and my knees totally almost buckled and I almost fell over because one of the people that were sitting in the audience was the keynote and that was Julie Kagawa. If you've read anything by Julie Kagawa, she writes the Iron Fae series. She's written the Blood of Eden series. She's also written a, a the Talons series. I'm sure that's not what it's called with dragons. And then she also did one with like Kitsumi recently. Um, but yeah, she writes exactly in that genre that I write like young adult kind of paranormal fantasy, all that kind of thing. So I actually got to read my story for her and that was terrifying. But I was sitting in the lobby of the hotel waiting for my ride to pick me up. And afterwards she actually came up to me sitting there and said, Hey, you're the person who wrote that story. And she told me how much she really liked it and how, um, she totally gets how characters would get in your head that way. She's like, not quite that way. Cause it does get a little off the rails, but, she's really kind of got it. So I don't know if she was just pumping my tires or whatever, but I am taking it as a win. I got to meet Julie Kagawa. I got to read for Julie Kagawa and she told me she liked my stuff. So total win. Number seven, I love horror and all things to do with monsters and all that sort of stuff, but I am a complete and utter wuss. When it comes to actual horror stories or horror, horror movies, I can't watch them because I will not sleep forever. However, I totally wanna to know the story. So on more than one occasion, I have Wikipedia'd horror movies just so I could find out the entire plot without actually having to watch the movie. And I am so much of a scaredy cat that just reading Wikipedia has given me nightmares before and I've been terrified of movies I've never even seen. Okay, number seven. So I have a book that I shelved. My first book that I ever wrote, I never completely finished it. I was actually missing probably about two chapters in the middle. And I wrote this before Wicked Descent and it was called Hemorrhage. And we will see if it ever sees the light of day again. I still really like the idea, but uh, it was something that I really, really struggled with because the story itself was probably new adult. However, when I started writing this book, new adult was not a thing. Nobody had ever heard of new adult. And if you don't know what new adult is, it's kind of that category in between young adult and actual just like adult romance where um you know it's a little spicier a little bit more than young adult and it's that coming into an adult but after high school kind of vibe you know it's not that first and new experiences like YA has but it's not fully you know responsible adults like regular fiction so I was writing a new adult story and I was really, really struggling because I was pushing it into a young adult category, except I was really struggling with some of the themes with it. So it didn't quite work out. Later on, as I got more into writing and I started writing like more, I guess, traditional YA books, I came across new adult and I was like, well, this is my problem. I was trying to write a book in a category where it didn't really exist. So maybe one of these days I will pull it out. I have found a way for it to make it YA if I wanted to, or it would definitely be very upper YA. But um, yeah, I might bring that book back one of these days. It does have a bit of a little bit of a twilight feel. There's no vampires, there's no werewolves, but it's just kind of got that secluded forks kind of feel to it. So who knows, maybe I will uh, pull it out one day and see what people think. All right, so my next one is just something about me. And this is, I do talk about dictation on my channel sometimes. And one of the reasons is because I pace when I think, when I'm trying to plot or I'm trying to think through something, I actually get up and pace back and forth. And if it's really, really, really detailed, I will talk to myself. I talk to myself a lot. I'm sure nobody's surprised by that, but I pace when I think and I talk to myself. Number nine, I'm sure a lot of people will be surprised to hear this, but I can't skate. Actually, scratch that. I can skate, I just can't stop. If I have figure skates, I can toe pick it, but I cannot hockey stop. And I talk a lot on my channel about, you know, watching hockey or being a hockey mom or all those sorts of things, but I cannot stop on skates. I have tried so many times. My oldest has tried to teach me and eventually like gave up and told me I was hopeless, but I think it's just the fear of falling that I cannot hockey stop on skates, which is really, really sad considering I grew up in Northern Manitoba. <laughs> and the final thing of, that you guys probably didn't know about me is actually my first book. 
I said Hemmers was the first book I ever wrote, but the first one that I really started getting into and where I thought I was gonna be as an author is I figured I was gonna write women's fiction. I had this in my head that I was gonna be the next Oprah's book club book, and I was going to write these just like tear jerking, super emotional, super change your life type of books. And then when I started writing them, I found out that I didn't really like doing that. I do like reading them. I do like reading women's fiction. I read a lot of different genres, but I was not not cut out to write women's fiction. One of the other reasons I thought I should write women's fiction is because I thought that being an adult and as I got older that I couldn't really write young adult anymore and that I was trying to hold on to something that I shouldn't be. But you know what? I love writing YA. YA has always been my passion. I still watch television shows that are very YA focused. I still read YA books and uh, yeah. No one's gonna tell me that I can't. So I'm really happy that I made the switch and that I am writing YA instead of women's fiction because I feel like my heart and soul is a little bit more into it. So those are the 10 things you probably didn't know about me. So if there is any of them that surprised you, leave in the comments below, or if there's any things that you thought you already knew about me, let me know in the comments. If you are an author tuber out there, I would love to see 10 things that I didn't know about you. So if you haven't picked up the tag from somebody else, feel free to do that. I would love to check it out. Thank you so much for watching and you guys have a great day.